In this lesson, we're going to be solving systems of linear equations by substitution. So to make that happen, our goal is to substitute one variable. So we have to get one variable by itself, and then we're going to substitute that into the other equation. So let's see how that works. So the directions are going to say solve. And our first example is y equals 5 and x minus y equals 3. So since they already tell us what one of the variables is, we can take the fact that y has to equal 5, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So if y equals 5 in this equation, it's also going to equal 5 in this equation. So we'll rewrite it as x minus our 5, that's what we substituted, equals 3. So we'll add 5 to both sides. x is going to equal 8. So our solution is the coordinate of 8, 5. So if we graph them, the lines would intersect at 8, 5. And if we want to verify that that's true, we'll take the 8 and the 5, substitute it in for the x and the y, and make sure that they add up to 3, or that they subtract to 3, and our y value is 5. Second equation. This one, both of the equations are going to be in slope-intercept form. So the first equation is y equals 3x plus 2. The second equation is y equals negative x plus 14. And this is ready for substitution as well, because they both equal y. Both of these two equations equal y, so that means that they're equal to each other. So you could think of it as they're equal to each other, or you can substitute that in for y into the other equation. So 3x plus 2 is going to equal negative x plus 14. And then we'll start to rearrange pieces to make the x's on one side and anything without a variable on the other side, our constants. So to move this negative x over, we'll add x to this side. So that'll get us a 4x plus 2 equals 14. We'll subtract 2 from both sides, and we'll have, those will cancel. 4x is going to equal 12. We'll divide by 4, and x will equal 3. Now once you have the x value, we'll find the y value by taking the x, substituting it back into one of the equations. Doesn't matter which one, whichever one looks easier for you. So maybe the first one. So we'll take y equal to 3 times, we found our x value to be 3, plus 2. And so now we're going to find out what our y value is. So y is going to equal 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 2. Our y value equals 11. So if we were to graph these two lines, they should cross at 3, comma, 11. But let's make sure that they work. So to check it, we're going to take this coordinate that we believe the answer is, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation. We just used the top equation to get that solution, to get the y value. So let's plug the x and y into the other equation and make sure it works and satisfies that equation as well. So the y value is 11, and we have a negative 3 for the x value, plus 14. So if this works, this should add up to 11. Negative 3 and 14 makes 11. So the check works, so our solution would be 3, 11. All right, another problem. So if we have 2x plus y equals negative 1, and 2x minus y equals negative 3, this time we don't have a variable by itself. So we have to do a little manipulation to get some sort of a variable by itself. And you have 4 to choose from, and one of them is going to be easier than the others. If we try to get this x by itself, we're going to have to divide by 2 at some point. 
creating fractions on these. This x has the same problem. Dividing by 2 will cause fractions. That y could be the best equation to get by itself, or the, get the best variable by itself. So we will try and solve and get that y by itself. So 2x plus y equals negative 1. We're going to bump the 2x over. To do that, we'll have to subtract it over. So the y would equal negative 2x minus 1. So now we can do substitution because we have a variable by itself and we essentially have one of these situations up here. So the y value is going to equal negative 2x minus 1. That means this y value is going to equal negative 2x minus 1 as well. Just like at the very beginning, if y equaled 5, so did that y. Exact same concept. So let's plug that in and see what it looks like. So this equation is going to become 2x minus. Now instead of the y value, we're going to substitute in what y equals, which is negative 2x minus 1. And then it still equals negative 3. So it's the exact same equation, except this y value got substituted with y, y equals. And now we can solve for x. We can manipulate it, do the math. Here we have to take care of the parentheses by distributing. So we're distributing a negative. And if you want, sneak a little 1 in there. kind of helps you to see that we're distributing a negative 1 to each piece. So all that's going to do is change their signs. So you'll have 2x plus 2x plus 1 equals negative 3. So we'll distribute the sign in, changes both of those from a negative to a positive and negative to a positive. Combine our like terms for x plus 1 equals negative 3. Try to continue to get x by itself. We'll subtract 1 and we'll have a 4x equals negative 4. Divide by 4. x is going to equal negative 1. Okay. So let's find our y value. So go back to the original equations, pick whichever one we would like to substitute x into, maybe the top one here. So we have 2 times negative 1 plus y equals negative 1. This multiplies to negative 2 plus y equals negative 1. We'll add 2 to both sides to try and get y by itself. So y is going to equal 1 plus a negative 2 will get you a 1. So we believe our solution is negative 1, positive 1. But before we circle that, let's make sure that it works. So we'll plug it into the second equation. We just used the first one to get our solution. So let's check the second one. So we have 2 times negative 1 minus our y value, which is 1, equals negative 3. So this makes negative 2 minus 1 should add up to negative 3, and it does. So we'll go back, make our answer stand out. So a little bit more difficult situation is we haven't dealt with a no solution or an infinite solution, and what does that look like? So, if we have another equation of x minus y equals 5 and 2x minus 2y equals 11, same thing, we want to try to get a variable by itself, and that x will be probably the easiest to get by itself because there's nothing we have to divide by and we don't have to change a sign. All we have to do is move the y over. So, to do that, We'll come down here with it. The x minus y equals 5. We'll just add y to the other side. So x equals y plus 5. So now we can do substitution. So if this x equals y plus 5, this x in your second equation also equals y plus 5. So We'll substitute that in. So 2 times, 
So the only thing that's changing is the x is being substituted with what x equals, and that is a y plus 5. All right, so now we'll distribute. So distribute the 2 in. That'll be 2y plus 10 minus 2y equals 11. And now we go about trying to solve, get our like terms together. The 2y and the y actually end up canceling each other. Didn't mean for that to happen, it just did. So you're left with a 10 equals 11, and this is a no solution. The lines would be parallel. So I look at this as if my variables go away, I'm either going to get a no solution or an infinite solution. And the question I ask, does 10 equal 11? And the answer is no, so it's a no solution. And the last one. If we have 6x minus 3y equals 12, and a negative 2x plus y equals negative 4, Again, I have to determine, if I want to use substitution, I have to determine which variable is the easiest one to get by itself. I feel like that y would be the easiest one to get by itself, so I just have to move the 2x over. So, let me rewrite. So we'll add 2x to the other side to try to isolate the y. So we'll have y equals 2x minus 4. So we have a y by itself. We're going to substitute that into the first equation, because we haven't messed with the first equation yet. So we have y equals 2x minus 4, so that means that y also equals 2x minus 4. So let's rewrite. So 6x minus 3 times whatever y is going to get replaced with is going to equal 12. So our y value is about to be replaced with this, and then we'll distribute. 2x minus 4. Now be careful with your distribution. A lot of people, if they make a mistake on this, they distribute incorrectly here. They think that we're going to distribute a 3, which is true, but that negative, that subtraction, is attached to the 3. And if that throws you off a little bit, sometimes you can add the opposite to get rid of your negative sign, and it's a lot more clear that that negative is, is attached to the 3, so we have to distribute both. So. 6x, negative 3 times 2 will be a negative 6x, and a negative times a negative will be a positive. 3 times 4 is 12, equals 12. So similar situation is happening, like our previous problem. Our variable canceled. We didn't mean for it to happen, it just did. And that gives us one of two solutions. It's either going to be a no solution or an infinite solution. We are left with the exact same value on both sides. So that is an infinite solution. But remember from before, infinite solutions means the same line. But you can't just say infinite solutions, you have to make sure that a solution works. So it's an infinite solution based on all the points that are on this line. And since they're the same, we can call it this line. So as long as it works for one of these one of these equations, it's going to work for the other. So it's infinite solutions of one of the equations. And I'll just pick the bottom one because the numbers are a little smaller. And that's it. Those are our last two situations. Otherwise, we get a, uh, a coordinate that satisfies both equations. So the lines are going to cross. Here the lines will be parallel, they don't cross, there's no solution, and on this situation we have infinite solutions because they're the same line. And that is solving systems of linear equations by substitution.